So thanks so much, um, uh, George, joining us today. Thanks. Welcome to LBO Fireside Chat. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to uh, engage you. Yeah, you. Um, and uh, thanks once uh, once again. And uh, I know that after hard partying last night, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe you are you know you are ready for the day. I am. In fact, we started uh, an hour and a half back. So wow. uh, <laughs> okay. Because you're still very young, you know. You're only 35 uh, years old. That's so, not know. what you said some time <laughs> back. But anyway, I will not hold you against that. <laughs> Uh, so welcome to LPO Fireside Chat. We have this wonderful opportunity of, you know, having uh, Mr. Joseph George. Uh, you know, friends call him Joe. Uh, uh, he is, uh, you know, regional president, uh, regional uh, chief of this multinational uh, global communication giant, uh, Malen uh, Lo. And uh, Joe got a very lengthy and a very impressive designation. Um, regional president, South Asia and Southeast Asia, and group chairman and CEO Malan Low Lintas Group. I believe that reflects the kind of uh, burden you carry and uh, yeah. responsibilities. Uh, no, so I've, 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 <coughs> I've pretty much enjoyed my entire stint, uh, and I continue to enjoy. Uh, the the Southeast Asia remit was something that was uh, given to me last year Jan. Mm -hmm. uh, so I finished exactly one year of looking after Southeast Asia. When is it Southeast Asia? What are the countries that come under? Uh, so we're looking at Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, yeah. Indonesia, Singapore. Um, so we've got six countries. The whole of South Asia. All of Southeast Asia. I believe Malan is primarily a US based company. That's correct. And uh, Lo is based in London. Uh, so I believe that coming together is bringing certain uh, synergies. Right. And if I'm right, okay, this is not the first attempt. There was yeah. a previously Amirati Puri's uh, Lintas. That's right. And that marriage didn't last yeah. long. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, this time around, you think that you will build synergy? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, 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 I think that the need for the union is quite clear. Uh, the intent genuinely was to build a uh, strong global brand. Uh, and and therefore, IPG in its wisdom believed that Malin being a very strong agency in the US and Lo being pretty strong in Asia and Europe uh, together would really then create a strong global brand. Uh, that's one. Two, uh, it's also for the first time uh, we have the Malin CEO actually looking after the combined entity. Oh, oh. So therefore now for the first time, uh, this agency is in a way headquartered out of the US now uh, because our global CEO <coughs> Alex Lakey he operates out of Boston and New York so uh, so now like our holding company this agency network also now is aligned to is, is, a, is a US network that's so to, interesting. So to speak, yeah. um, I just want to ask you know uh, uh, I discussed with you the challenges of merging um, ad agencies yeah um, because ad agencies tend to have their own unique cultures, culture, yeah. and um, and when these cultures generally come together, there's so much of friction, yeah. and uh, that uh, sometimes we could kill that, uh, or rather destroy the synergy you are expecting. Yeah. Uh, but strangely, correct me if I'm wrong, ad agency mergers last. I mean, the durability of ad agency mergers uh, uh, quite uh, quite lengthy. Long, that's right? Right. That's, yeah. correct. that's correct. That's correct. No, I think <coughs> you, you make a very good point, and that's something that uh, IPG, Mullen, and Lo are acutely aware of uh, going into this uh, into this union. And I think uh, both agencies have gone out of their way, uh, and I would give a lot of credit to Alex actually to to try and ensure that uh, the synergies were actually evident. Uh, within the network and for the clients. Uh, we've had a lot of sessions with senior leadership, both from Lowe and Mullen in the initial uh, few months to understand exactly why have we come together. Because once you, once you are aligned on what is the vision and what is the purpose of this merger, uh, then things become a lot easier. I think normally uh, relationships like this don't work because you are either not clear or you don't articulate uh, what is b this being done for? So 
So I think that was done quite beautifully and quite seamlessly, I must say. Uh, so in the space of 18 months, uh, I must say this, this union looks a lot older than 18 months. So you mentioned about, okay, obviously, uh, <coughs> one strategic objective is to build a global brand. That's right. I believe in terms of territories you operate, the two companies used to operate, they, they are complementary. That's right. uh, apart from that, um, uh, you mentioned about uh, there are certain uh, synergies already evident. Yeah. Um, could you share with us, okay, um, uh, has it changed the way that you look at the market, yeah. you handle the brands, your client relationships, yes, uh, yes. business processes, and also uh, fundamentally your philosophy? That's right. No, I, uh, so, I, so I think th the most evident fallout uh, of this union is what we call uh, the way we approach clients and their business through what we internally call hyperbundling. Because it is getting clearer with every passing day or week or month that it's now silly to look at uh, challenges in the market from the lens of individual channels, but it needs to be seen through the lens of a brand. And therefore, at times, you will have to go and tell the client that, listen, as opposed to saying, I've got a digital solution, or I've got a PR solution, or I've got a, I don't know, an activation solution. If you see it from the brand's lens, and then you recommend to the client saying, listen, from the brand, this is what needs to be done. Uh, then it's, it, it's, it's seeming to work for clients as opposed to going with individual channel strategies. Right. Uh, so this does two things for us, actually. Number one, uh, we are involved at a, at a much more larger landscape. Uh, two, there is also synergy in the way we keep the brand values uh, similar across every touch point. Uh, and what I'm realizing uh, as I speak to people from across the network is I think clients are getting increasingly frustrated about having to deal with too many specialists. And there are two reasons. One is, see, generally the marketing teams across the world are getting smaller and smaller, which then means it puts a lot of pressure on marketing uh, people in the client's end to have to deal with 5, 10, 15 partners. Uh, so that itself is tough. And then when each of these partners come with varying degrees of either competency or interest when it comes to brand, category, consumer, it can get quite frustrating. So in a way, clients are almost willing the creative agency saying, you know, why, guys, why don't you just do everything for us because the brand custodianship is with the creative agency. So, uh, so that's, that's an interesting uh, aspect of this union because Mullen has been practicing that. Uh, so th they have their own PR agency within the uh, within the agency, a media agency within the agency, digital within the agency, and uh, and and thankfully uh, that that's something that uh, the rest of the network now have yeah. have imbibed and. So what you say that okay the the industry has gone through a full cycle. It has. You're right. Uh, because uh, there was a fragmentation of services we have seen That's the last it. twenty years. Yeah. And I think it has it was a big challenge because as you said the, there was a time that correct me if I'm wrong, who the real custodian of the brand? Exactly. Because you had digital agency, you are creative agency, media agency, activation agency, outdoor agency, I don't know what else. Yeah. So. No, no, uh, you are absolutely spot right. on. And, and that is what has happened. So I think it has run its course. And I must say, just like how clients were the ones who, in a way, drove the disaggregation, uh, I am I'm pleased to say that they are the ones who are actually now driving subtly the aggregation. aggregation. Uh, because they're, they're <coughs> finding the custodianship splintered across too many partners. And they genuinely don't have the personnel to, to have to deal with so many people. Uh, which is great actually, because it's great from a brand point of view, it's great from a client point of view, and it's great from a mm -hmm. creative agency mm -hmm. point of view. You made a very interesting observation that the marketing teams are gradually uh, shrinking. Yeah. Um, and as a result, uh, uh, the creative agencies are taking over most of the brand building uh, responsibilities. That, yeah. is the, that is a trend you see. That's true. Again, of course, it differs from clients to clients, right. but certainly clients are leaning a lot more on their creative agencies to right. partner them on, on marketing decisions. Yeah. Um, another observation uh, I would like to seek your comments on, um, see the 
you know, when we were young brand managers, so generally you had this cozy relationship with your, um, you know, your agency, yeah. and it's a very intimate relationship. Yes. And yeah. the account executive kind of own the brand. Absolutely. And uh, actually, as a result, I got married to my account executive. Oh, <laughs> that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Clearly <laughs> taking a leaf, <laughs> leaf from Terry and Lila, Mani. <laughs> yeah. Oh, f- uh, oh, yeah. yeah I didn't get a beauty. Uh, yeah. I realized okay. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what we saw is that yeah. some kind of a struggle between close, intimate that and and that that started. You know, that relationship started drifting yeah. apart. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. now you think that's coming back. I think so. I yeah. think so. Uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, um, before we come to Sri Lanka, let me. Mm. Uh, uh, that's quite an unusual question. Uh, uh, if you take what is happening in the global, um, globally, there is a resurgence of you know nationalism, populism. So, what is the impact of that on international brands? Ah, okay. <laughs> so, I think uh, two, three possible implications. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is one may find a lot of strong local stroke national brands emerging Mm -hmm. Uh, and therefore that (coughs) that of course comes with a huge opportunity uh, for many countries to build their own strong uh, national brands Uh, but uh, what is also simultaneously happening uh, and you know these things are never binary Uh, the world is also becoming Mm. similar in Mm. a lot of ways globalization etc etc so if you see most of the really popular and robust global brands they in a way appeal to most people across the world uh, because they try and leverage simple insight Mm -hmm. which are universally felt Mm -hmm. Uh, so you are actually seeing a beautiful uh, scenario Mm -hmm. where there is an opportunity for uh, local national brands to become larger than they were but you also see the role for global brands to play that role. Uh, so I think there will be kind of, uh, you know, that, you know, the global brands go through cycles, uh, you know, sometimes they are highly globalized, international, then they start focusing on individual territories. Exactly. So what is happening now? You have kind of a tension between these two forces? I don't think no? so. I don't think so. Uh, <coughs> I think uh, uh, we are in a lucky place where we will see both mm-hmm. coexisting. Mm-hmm. And I must say that a lot of national brands will take cues and learnings from how global brands have built themselves. Uh, So at the end of the day, I think the consumer benefits because now he's got or she's got a better choice or or wider choice of accessing brands which are either national or or global brands. So let me come back to uh, these uh, from the global perspective to more regional. Um, this century is supposed to be the century of Asia, yeah. and I'm sure that you're excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> and the global uh, uh, economy center of gravity is moving towards us, if it hasn't already moved. That's right. And um, I think um, that what are the opportunities, prospects you see at uh, this part of the world, particularly your region? Yeah. No, I, I think I think uh, great prospects because all the countries or most of the countries in this part of the region are showing healthy GDP growth. Uh, I think consumers are wanting to uh, wanting to live better. They want to experiment with more brands, uh, new brands, better brands, uh, and therefore, uh, I think it's a combination of economies doing well, uh, people getting more disposable income, and 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 brands therefore playing a role in actually fulfilling those desires and interests. So most categories are still uh, hugely underpenetrated, and therefore that gives us an option of uh, an, an opportunity of getting more people into categories, uh, and and in in some cases also to get consumers to upgrade. So relating to what you mentioned earlier, so you expect kind of proliferation of multiple brands in the region um, our next twenty years. Uh. Absolutely, and which is why, like I was mentioning to somebody else. Uh, I think every category, the number of brands that are available is about 20x if you compare the last mm-hmm. 10 years, which therefore means the only way brands can survive is if they were to differentiate themselves with right. other options. Right. And who better to differentiate than agencies? 
so which is why i keep telling people that listen creative agencies are here to stay as long as right. there are brands right. in this world creative right. agencies will stay uh, and more the more the brands the merrier because the need to differentiate becomes even mm -hmm. more compelling mm -hmm. by the same time the you know uh the challenge is also it is uh, insurmountable right now because the how do the differentiation yeah. is uh, increasingly difficult to achieve that, right that's correct yeah. that's correct so i think I, i think at a functional level uh it's probably getting a <coughs> bit difficult to differentiate and which is why if you notice uh this entire area of brand purpose and brand point of view are now slowly becoming uh uh serious issues that clients and marketers are thinking about because they have now clearly come to the conclusion that consumers don't just buy brands but they buy into brands and for people to buy into brands brands need to stand for something a little more substantive than it washes better or it smells great or it tastes i mean beyond the functional deliveries i think consumers are also seeking a little more meaning from brands so that's the other area where brands can differentiate themselves right. beyond the functional attributes yeah. um i would seek your views on this um so we had this 100 year old mass marketing model right um so there was this belief that consumers have a sequential That's linear right. process of brand or brand discovery to the purchase etc etc et yeah <coughs> i believe now that that yeah. model is crumbling that's right now if you take traditional agency business which yeah. is built upon that right mass marketing model right if that model is crumbling yeah so would the agency business be yeah. okay no so that's a interesting provocative question but <laughs> <laughs> i have an answer for that <laughs> no i think two things uh, see as long as brands need to be uh, brands need to be created uh so let let alone the model of brand creation if the need <coughs> is there to create brands you will need creative agencies that uh, that's not going anywhere uh now is 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 the journey that the consumer is taking different yes it is uh but is he still looking for persuasion from the brand he is uh is he is he is he seeking Uh, affinity is he seeking respect is he is he seeing clients acha th this client uh, this this brand understands me this brand wants to understand me all those basics are not going away in a hurry so as long as what consumers seek from brands don't change fundamentally uh i think brand creation and and brand brand creation experts they will continue to sort of mm -hmm. have a role yeah my my challenge my challenge to you is if i if i extend that question further uh you mentioned about the brand touch point yeah. so what we see is that um, there's no one dominant touch point that's right. any longer am that's right? right that's right because the touch points are so fragmented exactly. now exactly so in an environment like that yeah. so how do you create kind of omni platform experience no no you're so right so what is the role of the creative agency no no which which is why i spoke about hyper bundling now mm. hyper bundling oh, yes. exactly the response to your absolutely correct observation because we genuinely don't believe that consumers seek it sequentially we'll say listen from if from the brand point of view what all needs to be done and once you shift your lens from a channel to a brand then mm. all this pretty mm. much falls in place so which is why it's incumbent on creative agencies to ensure that they just they see everything from the lens from a holistic lens of the brand and therefore then it will come naturally to them to i may well tomorrow go and tell a client that listen you know what i suggest you don't do advertising here you right. do you do only pr right. or you do only design like i was telling uh, bati uh, sometime back you know pr and design are emerging to be two really interesting aspects mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in today's time and age i think more and more clients are realizing that pr is a lot more cost effective way uh, to build awareness to build engagement to build conversations uh, uh, it, so it it's happening faster and cheaper mm -hmm. than actually spending big bucks behind traditional advertising that's one the second interesting part is on design now uh you know many times clients and marketers had to wait for a longish period of time 
to be convinced that now the brand is ready to extract a premium or to increase prices. But I think what design is do doing quite beautifully is that it is, in a, you, ca you can create premium imagery uh, uh, through great design and you don't have to wait for that life cycle right. till you are convinced that, you know, the brand is now price inelastic mm -hmm. for us to, you know, charge a premium. Design helps you do that earlier. So these are various, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, interesting aspects that have it's very interesting. The conversation would have been totally different uh, if you had this conversation 20 years ago. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have expected a creative agency boss to talk about design. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, even digital. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, I, you know <coughs> we, we keep talking digital and, and I keep telling people, you have to make a difference between, you know, digital marketing versus marketing for a digitized world. And they're very different. If you look at it in the former way, then you're going back mm. to seeing the lens from a Sanity. channel, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so our attempt across the network mm -hmm. is to actually mainline digital. And uh, and like, uh, you know, I keep talking about how advertising agencies have emerged over time. If you see many, many decades back, most agencies would only do print, radio and billboards, yeah? And suddenly films came into their lives and they were all wondering, oh God, I'm, I'm under equipped to manage that. So all agencies started what they, they launched a films department or a films division and they saw that as a special Another division. Channel. Exactly. And the agencies that brought the films department bang in the middle of the creative agency are the ones who survived. The ones who continue to treat the films department as a specialized function are the ones who perished. Is the same thing that's happening with the digital. Right. The longer you treat it as a specialized function, the faster you will hasten the death of the mm -hmm. creative agency. Yeah. Um, and haven't you? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. And I see this happening even with content. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you in two to three years, we'll have a similar conversation on content. Right. Like right. the conversation we're having on digital. Right. You have to get content into the center of the creative agency. Mm -hmm. You have to get digital in the center of the creative mm -hmm. agency. So you think that, okay, that the, the, the core function has, or rather focus has moved away from content to channel? That's what happened? That's right. You have to bring <coughs> back the content and put that the content in the center. That is correct. And that build your experience based on the content. That is absolutely right. Okay. That is absolutely that, that's, a, that's a very interesting view. Yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, don't you think when it comes to traditional advertising industry business, yeah. um, the industry was a little too late or are they took longer time to get adjusted? I uh, think. I or some of the agencies are still struggling if I'm No, right. no, most agencies are struggling, I must say. And, and most marketers are struggling as well. <coughs> I think uh, there were too many words and less action. Mm -hmm. So most marketers and agencies kept saying the right stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't think they practiced anything. And, and I think collectively we lost about five years as a agency mm -hmm. community and actually a marketing community. So I don't know whether I'm being harsh on both these communities, right. but the fact is that I think everybody spoke for too long mm -hmm. before putting something into action. I, um, I I don't know whether this perhaps uh, quite relevant to uh, South Asia or you know this part of the world. Um, see that we lack respect to young people. Take for example you know India, Sri Lanka, um, Bangladesh, uh, even China. You know uh, what is the average age of a politician? <laughs> so they are, yeah. uh, they are over 60. Okay. So I uh, don't think that similar thing is happening in the corporate world because if you want to, because if you are a CEO or a marketing director who is 50 years old, 55 years old, you may think why should I worry about you know digital because I am going to retire mm. in another five years. Yeah, yeah. But the same guys don't give that opportunity to yeah. the digitally savvy. Yeah. The folks who are in their late 20s and 30s. Yeah, yeah. Is that a barrier to adoption of digital? No, it is It is a barrier. And, and I think that was the principal reason why marketers and agencies, more so marketers, actually took longer <coughs> to embrace uh, digital in its truest form. Because what they did was they assigned some really young brand managers to say, okay, digital, right? Okay, let me <laughs> okay. call some 23, 24 year olds. Please manage this. Okay. Uh, so they, in a way, 
abdicated the responsibility of actually digitizing themselves in mindset and and then percolate that down the mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. the company uh, they they initially saw this as something that some young brand members can you know play with uh, while life continued uh, as usual but uh, companies and agencies that uh, that uh, understood this at the senior most level and started practicing that at the senior most levels are the ones who succeeded so you are absolutely right i think for too long and which is why i said i think we lost a good 5 to 6 right. years right. because many marketing heads and agency heads just you know gave this off as a toy to the young brand managers to play right. with okay here is a few few million rupees or or, or th few thousand dollars go and do something on social right. or go and do something on search or go and do something on uh, i know so so to what extent you think these you know multi platform or, or omni platform vision for a brand is been adopted this part of the kind of world you think we have a long way to go or we are already there or no i i think the, i think the need exists it's it felt need is it felt need is felt uh but the challenge is and this is where the so the irony is you cannot offer a strong horizontal solution if you don't have strong verticals that's the <laughs> okay. irony yeah so if if i'm providing you a strong horizontal solution you will say but hey what do you know about pr to give me a solution on pr right so you have to simultaneously build two things you have to build vertical expertise mm -hmm. but you also need a culture and the talent in the company who can actually bring this mm -hmm. together who can then provide a horizontal solution so you need both right it's very interesting you you, you need strong verticals to be in a position to credibly offer a strong horizontal right. Uh, so let's come to uh, Sri Lankan operation. Uh, I think Sri Lanka is in a very, very challenging position, if you, both from politically and economically. When there's a lack of optimism, lack of enthusiasm mm. about the immediate future, mm. people and industry is going to, uh, is the first industry going to get affected. Yeah, yeah. Right? Particularly when the interest rate is edging up, yeah. only way you can save your margin short term is cut the advertising yep. budget, because yeah. that is the easiest thing to do. Yeah, yeah. In a situation like this, yeah. okay, how I, how are you going to extract growth from the market? Mm. So uh, you know, the way I see this is slightly different, mm -hmm. um, and this was quite evident in our conversation with with clients that I have been having here in the past one year. I think in tough times they are actually leaning to the agencies even more. So yesterday. again i was having conversation with two three of them and all of them saying you know what let's engage more mm. i need more help in this and this is not just advertising solutions right. that they are wanting right they want us to engage with them on on mm. brand on mm. marketing on business so i think that the more challenging the times are somewhere somebody needs to put their hand up and say mm. you know what i want to partner you obviously you will need the skill set and the competencies to be able to partner somebody so that's something that internally we are quite clear that we need to build because i do i cannot and should not offer help if i don't have the competency to do that uh so i so so different different times have different challenges when the market is booming when the economy is booming etc etc i think what they seek from agencies is different when it is not what they seek from agencies is different and i think we just need to be alive to what our client seeking in this in this sentiment and in this mood and and i believe uh, it's it's incumbent on us to then right. gear accordingly see um if you take malen low that's that's not something you know uh, folks over here family with right and uh, you kind of jettison lintas name yeah. whereas in india you you will tell lintas am i right it's yeah. a part of the uh so i believe that you need to to some extent build the brand here no yes um so what do you think as the three most challenges for your agency this year in sri lanka okay so uh okay if i were to the top three i think one is uh we need to scale up uh i believe that the equity that this brand has in the market is a lot larger mm -hmm. uh than the actual scale of the operation and we are in a, we are in a 
we are in a good position that way because most most agencies and clients actually or brands they are trying to build equity we already have the equity mm -hmm. we just need to build scale to be in line with our equity so i think uh, we want to get a bit aggressive about uh, about scaling up uh, that's one uh, two i think what we want to continue to be known for is our creative culture and our creative product mm -hmm. uh, like i keep telling all my people our only transactable ware is our creative product and that has to drive everything that we do internally uh, and going back to i think one of your earlier points in terms of saying when the sentiment is down etc what what role can agencies play now one of the things that this agency has been very good at uh, over the past decade or so is we are great in delivering effective work so at the at the annual fees we been number 1 or number 2 for the last 10 years now and and that's something that we want to proudly uh consider at, at the mm -hmm. core of the agency so you see a more breadth in the portfolio coming yes, years more breadth in the portfolio without losing out the fact that we are here in the business to provide right. effective and work. build in your verticals absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay um i i believe you got a wonderful team over here yes. and i wish i can continue talking to you uh but unfortunately bati warned me that there's no lunch available for <laughs> me uh, so i have to <laughs> wind up um, i know that you have a very busy day yeah. ahead of you well, it is thank you uh, it for is great me. talking to you thank you so much and to uh, all the best and good luck we hope to see you uh, more often in yes, kalambo yes in fact next what i'll be here again so thanks once again and thanks all again. the very best to uh, malan low sri lanka yes <laughs> okay thank, thank you. you thank you